Okay, so what are we going to do today? Um, today we're going to uh, compare the front end Titans. And I uh, already have a message here from M. Hockham, and he says, I have no clue about any of those. Um, well, let's hope we can change that basically. Um, let me see, let me quickly get on Discord and. Uh, let's do a little bit of, of marketing here. Uh, so marketing, <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So in the general, let's do this. and web dev Okay, <clears throat> so here's the basic idea, right? Is, um, let me go here. Let me go to the regular standard view here. Okay, so what we kind of wanna do is we're gonna convert a very, very simple, um, and let me actually just run this directly here. So that's a vanilla JavaScript implementation, right? Of uh, what we're basically going to do. So what this does is it's relatively um, primitive. Uh, you put in, I don't know, let's say onions and you say, show me options. And because I have to route, so it takes a while, but then there you go. 
um, and then here you get um, some recipes out and the idea is basically okay you just put in what you have in your fridge and it gives you some kind of recommendations of what to um, uh, what you could do with that so um, the what I'm using here is called puppy recipe recipe puppy something like that yeah so that's a super primitive API right that basically like okay you just call this with your queries so so that's not anything that's really complicated and then we get uh you know particular things back uh how does that look uh in in vanilla js let's maybe look at that quickly um so i have uh a simple form here and then i have the results container um and um a very simple script uh, that uh, basically does so you see I, I have to add this here um, to make it work for me um, because uh, I don't have HTTPS locally and um, basically what I'm doing is um, you know have event listeners on on uh, the on the form itself and I'm basically taking out the um, here are the contents and then I'm writing manually uh, here with this card template uh, function, uh, the cards depending on um, uh, the results, right? So relatively simple. Now, the what's interesting uh, about or why I chose this this kind of uh, simple example is because I want to basically recreate that in both Vue and in React. Okay, and the way I'm going to go about this is to say, uh, okay, I would like to have a, a page, so a container page of some sort. And that container page is uh, intended uh, to basically use um, two components. And um, we want basically to have two things that we're gonna compare um, the frameworks with, right? One is to pass down, so per properties, and one is to bubble up uh, per event and uh, see how both frameworks handle that. So I will basically have a, a, well, a simple page and in that page there will be one component that's a search component um, where I'm going to basically uh, input uh, that and, and then the results I will bubble up and then the uh, page itself will iterate over the um, um, you know, cards basically accordingly. So a little bit of an overkill for, for uh, as you can see, the vanilla JS solution works kind of fine, uh, but nonetheless, so I have basically generated now a here um, a vanilla view react. And what I am going to do is, um, hey, Silverflow stream, how's it going? I have seen your, your messages. I have not had time to, uh, you know, look, look into your problem today. Um, so what, what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to start with one uh, and that is uh, let's just start with view first maybe so what we're going to do is uh, i'm not sure where this okay jump into the terminal and so what i'm going to do is um i'm going to use the view cli and frankly you have to kind of look up how that works uh is that uh yep that's probably something i should should, really should, should do here uh view cli create project yeah that's that's how it works right i haven't done that in a while uh view create hello world it's that simple okay so view uh create and i'm going to call this view app Okay, so let's see what that's doing. Uh, apparently it takes a while. Okay, so the first thing, and I want you to keep that in mind, right? The first thing that, that the view CLI uh, does is it's gonna ask you what you wanna do. And that's very different from, from the Create React app. So um, in that case, I wanna say manually select features. Uh, I'm gonna have Babel in there, TypeScript, let's not overdo it that we don't need a router we want. Yep, um, the linter I don't need. And yep, so that's basically what I'm gonna do. Uh, yes, the history is fine. 
dedicated config fields um, and this no. Okay. So what Vue does is in, in this configuration that I just chose, it's going to be a little less than a hundred megabytes of files that I'm going to um, install in my node modules uh, in this particular directory. Uh, and that's about, um, in, in comparison, Rack will, will take about at, at least 160. Um, so the whole installation process itself is, is therefore a little bit quicker and uh, it's a little bit more slender than, than um, React would be. So that's something that we kind of have to have to sit through every time. Right, you know that from from the uh, React app that's um, kind of um, kind of a drag, you know, to wait for those installations, especially if, if you don't have like like a uh, fast internet and or machine, or you use your internet for streaming. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, um, let's basically do exactly that. Um, let's go into this uh, view app directory, right, that uh, the ID should have placed in here. I guess the indexing is kind of fighting with it for a moment. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, and then we say, okay, uh, yarn serve. Okay, so that's the development server. So what we have now is uh, if I run this, and basically Oh yeah, that's fighting a little bit here with the Rams. Um, there we go. So that's our view app basically out of the box, right here, this uh, installed plugins that I chose. So it's the ba Babel and router. Actually, we don't need the router for this uh, instance. It's just like interesting to know that you can do that because um, in it's quite painful in React to get the router in. And here it's just a choice in the CLI. I really like that. Um, so again, the first thing that we're going to do is, is kind of look like what, what that, what that does, right? So let's look into the view app. Whoops. Let's maybe close. Ooh, what did I do here? Uh, okay. What the hell is going on? Hold on. Something is freaking out. And that's my keyboard. Yeah, my keyboard is freaking out. Okay, not sure what the hell happened. Um, so we have basically uh, everything that's relevant for us is, is in source, right? Let's give this a little bit of a look here. So we have our main JS, uh, which doesn't do much. It basically creates a new view instance. A little bit, you will we'll see the same thing in React. And then we basically have our um, uh, app view, and this is what we can basically see, right? So we have the uh, home and the about. Um, so if you look into what the, oh, come on, what's going on here, right? This is basically what we see here. We have those two links here, right? Those are the router links. And then here's the router view. Now, the way that's done in, in view is you have a dedicated router, right? Where you can here see, Okay, those are basically my routes. That's a pattern a lot of, of backend frameworks use too. If, if you're using like Express or Laravel or whatever, you would have a dedicated router that would basically, uh, you know, um, align you with your endpoints accordingly. 
So what we want to do is uh, we first of all need a page, right? So in view, per, uh, they call that views, right? Instead of pages, but as you can see, those are basically the pages that we're dealing with. Uh, technically speaking, those are just components, right? There's no difference. If I look at uh, a, like, let's say home view, and if I look at um, a hello world component, uh, I will notice that, okay, other than hello world has a way more template structure. The, the actual idea here is the same, right? This effectively is a view component uh, hooking into, into the main view. Uh, same here, see, that's basically a view component. And what we're going to do very at the very beginning is to say, well, let's first make sure that um, we create our own, right? So we're going to say a uh, new view component. And I have this in my IDE, so you can write that yourself if you want to. Um, and say, uh, we're going to call this recipe. Okay. Uh, actually, don't do any of this for now. Um, so my recipe and the only thing that I'm really going to do here uh, is to say, let's put it in an H1 and say test or uh, welcome to recipe finder. And in our router, what we're going to do is to say, hey, this actually is a different one. Uh, it has the name start and the component is called, or actually let's leave this as home. Makes more sense, I guess. Uh, and the component that we're using is very different. So I'm going to say import, and those are just browser imports. Uh, and I'm gonna say recipe from, and then I say uh, views uh, recipe, that view. And not sure why bitches here so much. And here I'm going to say recipe. Yeah, why? Okay, it's just fighting a little bit. Okay, so this should kind of work. Um, and if I go back here, uh, I can here see my welcome to recipe finder, right? That's now my, my home route. So that's where I want to basically uh, go off of. So the first thing that I want to do is to say, okay, now we need a couple of components. So let's create a new view component. And that is going to be my recipe uh, search. Okay. And so I'm going to steal from this index right now, actually a couple of things. So first of all, for time sakes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import some styles here and actually going to do that even higher in my in my recipe. Yeah, that's, that's fine. So uh, import, and then I simply say dot 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 dot. Uh, let me think where I am here. So I'm in views, uh, one out, two out, and then vanilla. And then style.css, right? That should work. Let's make sure that's the case. Okay. Relative module was not found. How do you feel about that one? Hello? Okay, that seems to work. That seems to work. Yeah. Okay, and then in my, what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to say, okay, this container is something that I wanted to have on my recipe itself. All right, so that's going to be my container. That's fine. And in my recipe search, I'm going to put the form in here. Okay. So far, so good. And here, this is the name recipe. Okay, so that should work fine. Now on my recipe, I should be able to say, okay, uh, import, 
uh, recipe search from components recipe. And the only thing I want to do here is because now I have not registered that globally, I'm going to say components. Um, in that case, it's simply like recipe search for now. And now I should be able to do the following and say, uh, recipe search. Uh, oh, I caught this components. I didn't like that. Okay, got it. <laughs> um, recipe search. Hold on, what's going on here? Recipe search. Okay, I'm not sure why it does that. Uh, that's why. Um, let's see where the issue is here. Uh, component template contain exactly one root element. Yes, okay, that makes perfect sense. Uh, so that's important. And you will find that to be true for basically anything. Uh, right, so that should work now. Let's give it a spin. And as you can see, I already have this um, um, uh, here, what's in your fridge, I can basically, yeah, no, let's, let's leave it like that. Let's leave it like that. And the question that I have a little bit is, this container should be um, like this, right? Yeah. By the way, as you can see, the, it, it automatically reloads. What I also like about how um, the, um, the view development server is set up is something that we will see later. That what you sometimes have with those live reload systems is like it's super annoying if, if you're uh, working on something that is like multi-stepped and then it live reloads and you start from scratch. Um, view has a very, very good um, uh, way of, of basically handling that. How's it going, Football Maniac? Um, any expert in Laravel here? Yes, uh, in the chat. In the chat is the Laravel expert, probably. Uh, not the Laravel expert, but but uh, some one of them, I guess. Um, so what um, what we have now is, of course, to say, okay, so how would this effectively look like? So now we simply have a form in our recipe search that's a little bit uh, boring. So we need to say, okay. How uh, do we bind those things? So the first thing that we probably want to do is to say, uh, let's get to the input and create a binding for this. And uh, that is done with the model. Uh, and then we basically say, okay, this is our term. Okay, then what we need to do is to basically say, we're going to define some data here. Uh, and data is in a component, uh, always a function that returns um, an object. And in that case, we want to say that's term, and it is a string. Actually, we can even set that to empty in that case. Who's on the chat? Yeah, so if um, uh, I'm hoping if you're still here as the Laravel expert, um, then feel, feel free to reach out to Football Maniac. Um, so what we have is, right, so, so now we have the terms bound, and then basically what we want to do is we want to have a couple of other things. So we want to kind of debounce uh, this. Uh, so I'm going to say uh, disabled, uh, disabled, okay. So why am I doing this? It's because I don't want you to kick that while, while the API is running, right? So I'm gonna set this to false. Now the way it works in Vue is if you wanna bind, and that's gonna be very different from React later on. If you wanna bind, there's something that uh, is basically a uh, vbind, and then disabled will not be the string disabled, but actually the value that we have either in data or in props or in computed. Uh, and the short code for that is simply a colon. So you can just write it like this. Um, 
I, I don't know football maniac. Do you? Uh, yes, I, I, yes, I think he is. I think he is. Um, so that basically right now it's not disabled, right? So so that would be fine. But later when I when, when I make my call, I want to make sure that um, uh, again this is disabled while while we're in transit. And the last thing I want to do is to say okay. So there is a unsubmit, and that basically does uh, the actual search, right? Which you can see is not defined right now. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create custom methods. And so search will be one of those. And in my case, it's actually going to be asynchronous. Um, so when that happens, so, so here's actually something that we now need to do is, is we could write, of course, natively with, with fetch. Um, I'm going to basically say, uh, let's make sure yarn and wait, we need to go in there. CD, what do we call this view app? Uh, and I want to add Axios. Okay, there we go. Um, and then I'm going to look into the script JS of the vanilla solution and basically see what I'm doing here, right? So where is this even happening? So we need these things here. Let's just get them in quickly. And our recipe search. Uh, we get that in and then we also need an import statement uh, axios from axios um, and so what I then want to do let's go back here is and see where I'm what am I actually calling this stuff here okay so that's going to be my actual call okay so in my recipe search here at the methods, the, so basically what I want to do is to say, okay, uh, let's do a try and say, um, let result equals uh, axios dot get. Um, and then here we're going to have an await and instead of the string, we're going to say this dot term, right? Because that is how we bound it to what we're looking for, right? That's here we, what we did here. And that should basically um, already output it in the way that we want. I'm simply going to do a little bit of a, uh, a console error here. If, if that doesn't work for whatever reason. Okay. So from a functional standpoint, so if you click uh, the submit button, right? What I want to do is to immediately say, hey, um, this disabled um, is true. And after it resolved, I want to say this disabled is false. And now the question is how, what do I want to do? And, and there are two ways of going about it to get it out Right, and um, what we want to do in our case is to say we're going to create a custom event, and um, we're going to simply saying okay, this emit, and then uh, recipes. That's the event, and the body would be uh, res data results. Uh, I just happen to know that because the yeah so the results uh, what that API returns basically has has a results um, below it and that would actually contain the recipes and that's all I need for this purpose. Um, seems too complicated. Um, well, that's why we're doing this. So we're comparing now how this works with Vue and then how it works with React, and um, that will hopefully get us somewhere. Um, so what we want to do at this point, just, just so we see that it's basically working is I'm going to quickly simply log, uh, this, uh, so res result data, um, results just to see if this even works in theory, right? 
So let's save that. Oops, let's save that here. Um, put that here and give it a shot here. Oops. Um, maybe, maybe it would make sense to move this down here in this view. Okay, so show me options. Uh, yeah, so there's an event for that. Okay, um, what we always have to do with forms, right, is to basically prevent default. Now, we do get an event in here if we wanted to do this very classically, but uh, Vue has a very, very uh, handy uh, way of, of doing stuff like that. So I can simply say dot prevent which basically means that the regular event would not fire. And that makes it very, very easy to handle. Uh, let's reload this and basically say, do the same thing again. Okay, let's look at the network and see that, okay, this is still pending. Again, this takes forever. So it's, it's one of those open APIs, but that's okay. Ooh. There we go. Okay, so with our results back, and you can see, okay, here are basically our uh, recipes. And in the console, you can now see, yep, we're directly getting the recipes in. That's great, and everything we wanted to achieve so far. Now, here comes the trick now, right? So we're, we're giving this out by an event, right? That's basically um, one way of doing it. And so in our recipe view, we can listen to events. So we call it the event recipes. So what I can do at recipe search is I can say, okay, uh, at recipes, uh, recipes, that's our event now. Uh, and then basically say, uh, bind recipes. which um, is of course a method that we don't have. So we already know how that works. So we simply to come define methods and say, uh, bind recipes. And that receives recipes. And in that case, we also wanna have some kind of data here. Oh, sorry. is an array and then here we can simply say this dot recipes equals recipes and so now I basically automatically update the recipes that I have here right um, and that's great that's great um, because now I have them bubbled up so now I have my recipes here in my uh, recipe search component. Since when are you all learning this? I feel like I'm super overwhelmed even by PHP and after seeing what Neo does and everything that he knows from JS, PHP, all those different frameworks and who knows what else. I mean, how do you all learn everything so quickly? <laughs> like 70. Um, so, uh, in 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 between, like like being a genius in seventy, um, I would say none of those things are true. Um, what we're what you have to, every everything that you learn in life, right, uh, feels complicated at the beginning. So if if you learn something like like swimming, um, you kind of like you know, you know like you, you go into the pool. And you see those people that, and they all just swim, right? And, and you kind of wonder why is it so difficult for you to basically stay afloat? And uh, if, if you can remember that. And that's a little bit uh, how it is throughout life uh, is that, uh, or the first time you drove a car and you just noticed that how come everybody can, you know, just drive cars and nobody seems to have a problem with it. And at the same time, they can listen to music and talk to you and, and you need all this concentration. Um, so that's it's a, it's a it's a matter of practice, right? It's not it's not a skill that's super easy to learn. I'm not not saying that, but um, 
it's also not as it's also not rocket science, right? So so I mean you'll you'll be able to handle it. Um, definitely, definitely, if that answers your question. Um, and I, I might I might actually have this as as a repo that 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 you guys can look at. Um, so so you have a little bit of a better handling on on how that works. I'm just walking you through the process right now. So um, what we are going to see now is we have those recipes bound, and the what reason why we want to do this is because we want to pass it down to something that we iterate over, and that is a new. Um, component that we're going to build and we're going to call this uh, recipe uh, card okay um, and my recipe card is something that I'm also basically going to steal from script here and see how that's going to look like uh, so I'm simply going to take this one and here I'm going to say uh, full width. I'm going to place that in here. Uh, and it also needs to flex. Okay. Um, so far, so good. So what kind of changes do we have to make in order to make this um, string literal uh, capable of, of handling things. So the first thing that we kind of wonder is, okay, we need to receive something, right? So we're going to define props. And props uh, will consist of something that we call recipe. And we expect this to be an object. Okay, so now if somebody passes in the recipe, um, we can actually uh, read it as if it were our own data, right? So that's that's pretty useful. So what we want to have here is to say, okay, so the only changes we need to make are basically making this a little bit more in the style of um, view. Um, so here, we use the same trick as before. We say, no, please, please bind to the actual value, right? And that should basically do it. The only thing here is, okay, that's a little tricky. Let me actually get that into the new line so you can see that better. Uh, this is where we're going to get the recipe images. So I'm um, kind of going to do this probably like that and then say, a string no um, that's like that it's like that plus recipe thumbnail plus oops yeah that should do that should do I'm not sure if I need that one do I need that one um let me quickly see let me quickly see uh wherever i have that uh how do i do the styles here where do i do that um, just one second. Yeah, this should work. Why does it look like that? It wouldn't. Ah, how about that? Okay, so far so good. Um, then the recipe card. Okay, so in our recipe, so here we're again at the top. Let's first make sure that we actually have that. Right, and say, okay, import uh, recipe card. And in our components, we can now say uh, recipe card, just to register it here locally. And what we can do here now, and that's pretty, pretty awesome. That's why I like um, how uh, iterations work with, with um, 
with view, I can here basically say, okay, so I can put in props, right? And we said the property that we need is recipe. So we need to say v4, uh, and then we say uh, recipes in, sorry, recipe in recipes, right? So that's the data that we get from, from the search. Uh, hold on. Kind of type, okay. And then we're gonna pass in the recipe and it is recipe. So we have to find that that must be an object down here, right? So, so we don't have any kind of binding issues here, I think. Let's actually make sure. So ideally, this now is is actually done, right? Am I wrong? No, this should actually work. Let's check it out. So let's do our onions again. Show me my options. I'm just gonna take a while, but we can see that, that the button is, is disabled. Bum, okay. So here, here are my recipe results, and basically that's that's already all, right? This is this is a working. I mean, we could make that prettier, but that's not what this uh, is about. And so now we can basically say, okay, fair enough. That is our uh, uh, ver view version of of this application. I hope it's not too loud. There's just the uh, in the background, my my trash is is being picked up today. Is that something you guys can live with? Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Okay. So, uh, what's my general to PHP here? Okay. Let me quickly see what's going on here. Oh, somebody put me in streaming announcements on uh, in a different Discord. That's kind of cool. Thank you so much. So, um, now let's see, let's try to remember everything and let's look at how the same system would work uh, in React, right? So let's basically shut down our development server here. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into the build process because that's basically the same. Um, and now let's get out of here um, and now say uh, npx um, create React app, uh, React app. Okay, so a little bit the same procedure here. A little bit of patience. So, uh, gives us time to chat a little bit, I guess. Audio is okay, thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> with with React, the the um, the process is basically uh, it takes a little bit longer if you start out. It's it's actually only again as I said before it's it's only 160 uh, megabytes or only I mean it's actually quite insane for for a JavaScript framework, but um, there's so many files that's why it takes forever. And also have the feeling that kind of like my computer gave up on it for a second here. Let's let's hope it kicks on. Yeah, there we go. There we go. You can do it. Yeah, I'm always surprised how much how much uh, RAM that st uh, streaming software takes. Makes everything very slow. So it's also not just just React in that case. It's just kind of like the heavy load on my machine. But 
that we're always there. There we go. Yeah, done in 117 seconds. So that's, and, and as you can see, we're not even, I mean, now it basically starts the regular process. Oops. I'm using, uh, sorry about that. Uh, I'm using OBS and I connect it to Restream so um, I can basically at the same time stream to um, uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube and um, Facebook and Periscope. Okay, so now let's close everything that we already know. Right, and say, okay, so we're not in vanilla, we're not in view, we're actually in React app. And let's have a look of how that looks like. So let's start the, the development server. Uh, oh, I need to actually go in there. CD React app. Okay. How about that one? Let's ignore that one for now. Now let's see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's running on th 3000. Uh, which is a fallback. I'm actually a little bit surprised to see that. I hope the other one shut down correctly. Yeah, just, just quickly for shits and giggles. Yeah, okay. Okay, so that's basically how um, React looks like from, from the get-go. Uh, probably you've seen that before. And let's basically do the same kind of walkthrough at the beginning, right? To say like, okay, so... Um, you you do remember that you were asked uh you know of the setup of view react doesn't do that with the react um uh, with a create react app um it basically just gives you a couple of of things like you can see there's a service work already included but we don't have a router and so on so you have um not really um the same possibility of of customizing it in the same way uh you can however uh but uh, well not, Let's not get into that. Um, there, there are ways, of course, to tweak that behavior. Um, so same thing here. You have an index that basically does nothing else. Oh, yeah. Let me actually tell it quickly that we're writing React now. Um, that does nothing else but um, uh, loading the, uh, the app itself. Right. So in public, you would find an index HTML. Uh, that would then basically uh, load up this script and this script does uh, nothing else but including this app, right? Which is our, uh, exactly what we see there on the browser. Now, the, the biggest twist in, in React is um, what, that, that JSX, right? So something that looks a little bit like HTML, um, uh, it, but it's not completely, as you can see, it's called class name. Uh, and it's super strict, so you got to be careful with your self-closing tax and so on. Um, but um, other than that, it, it you feel quite at home in, in a very short amount of time there. Um, so we're going to do the same here. First, we're going to steal the um, the um, what's it called from the vanilla the um, the CSS. So in React, um, it's not supported. Um, to have something uh, connected that's outside of source. Um, so what we're going to do is to save ourselves some time is I'm going to go into vanilla. Uh, where is it? And simply steal the CSS for now. Yeah. Okay. I don't even bother. Um, just so I can say, okay, you now for us that is uh, style CSS. Uh, and we also don't need the logo, which means we don't have a logo here. And so the only thing that we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing as in view, just to have a fair comparison. Um, we're, we're not really going to make use of a router. 
uh, we are basically saying, okay, we are loading um, home, right? So as you can see in, in React, there are no predefined um, subfolders of any sort. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of do the same thing that we did before, where I'm going to say, okay, we're going to have components and we're going to have pages, um, just to have a logical uh, separation of, of um, you know, levels. So in my page, and uh, I'm going to have a home, right? And so what I'm going to do is in the first step is I'm going to import React from React. And we're going to write in the new style that um, was introduced in 16.4, I think. So, so with, with the hook-based solution, right? So instead of writing classes, um, we're writing uh, functions. So let's just say, I'm going to say, okay, this is my home. And uh, at the end, we're going to say export default home. And yes, you can write that in one line if you want to, but I find that cleaner. And um, they will basically have a return. So uh, this naming is kind of weird, right? So, so this is a return function, not a return. Um, sure, uh, I guess I guess there could have been better better uh, naming options, but but that's what they went for. Um, so I'm going to return and simply do the, here a little bit the same. So and I'm going to say, what I'm going to return is here a test. Um, for the premium purposes, yeah, yeah, sure, 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 sure. If if uh, you're absolutely right, uh, I I would probably need a little bit more CPU power and all of that. Um, but um, um, you know what? I'll get back to you if I have a Patreon. How's that? <laughs> Um, okay, so here's the home, and then we go here and, and say, um, let's include that, right? So now we have a home, so let's import that, and it's, as you can see, that's pretty much how we expect it to behave, and then now we have our home, and in that case, we want it to be like this, okay? So that said, ugh, why does this keep happening? That said, if I look at the browser now. Mm. Oh, yeah, this doesn't auto reload. So I have to do that myself. No, it's compiling now. Okay, then here I see my test, right? So we call this differently in our instance, we called this um, uh, welcome to uh, recipe finder. Okay. So that's a little bit what we want uh, to have here. And then we're going to do basically the same kind of, of setup where we say, okay, so we will have two components. Component one uh, will be our search. Uh, and we're going to call this even the same. Uh, this is going to be our recipe search. And in, as you can guess, we're going to import uh, React from React. And as you can also guess, we're going to have our constant uh, whoops, recipe search, uh, which is going to be a function. And which is something that we're going to export. Um, now let's start with with what we need to do here. So let's start with the ah, that's the class based. Sorry, uh, return. Now here comes a little bit the first pain point of of uh, React, and thankfully my IDE takes care of this. So if I do the same thing that we did the last time, where I say like, okay, let's simply you know steal the the markup from somewhere, and you could now be on any kind of um, you know if if you imagine you you just copy pasting code from from I don't know a Bootstrap example or whatever. Right, then uh, things become a little bit um, uh, the stuff that we simply do once in a while. So if I paste that in here, um, there will be, do you see how, how there are markup errors here all over the place? So there's one thing my ID automatically 
managed to do is to rename everything that is class into class name, which is great. Um, but here, for example, with the self-closing tag, that's something that it can't do. And I have to be sure that that's the case. And then as you can see, everything resolves and it looks kind of fine. Um, so, and then the question is, okay, how would models work, right? So what we have here is something, remember in view, we had our view model here. That's not how it works in React. Uh, React has not a binding on that level. What we would do in such a case is we would use uh, state and then we could can define uh, the the hooks accordingly. So let's create um, uh, what would we call this term and set term and say that's use state and that's an empty string initially. Okay. So now set term uh, um, is is a setter for term. And term itself is something um, that is connected to the state. So basically, it, it uh, creates the kind of, of lifecycle binding that, that we want. And here in the input, we can then say something like, OK, on change. And so the difference between uh, another one is, is that, so do you remember in view when we wanted to bind something? Uh, we used this little uh, markup trick here, uh, React does it uh, in the same way, but instead of using uh, quotes, you basically use uh, curlies um, to basically indicate that you want to bind. So um, what we can do here is to say, okay, uh, unchanged it is an event, right? And this event uh, can basically say, okay, set term, and then event target um, value. Okay, it's not pretty, but it works. Um, and so what, what happens then is that um, we now basically have term as an updated value, right? So, so far, so good. Um, but what we want to do is we want to create, like, of course, way more functionality. So the first thing that we want to do here is to say, okay, there's an on submit. And um, that does our actual search. Okay, so search is something that we haven't defined. So let's do that here and say, okay, constant search is a function. And so let's actually make sure. Uh, um, and then we say React app. Um, so what we also want to do here is at Axios, of course, in the same way. Whoops, that was, it's not yarn, it's yarn. Um, so we have a fair usage here. Okay. So far, so good. So far, so good. Actually, let me quickly see. Let me hook into here quickly. Authenticating. Yeah, I'm just going to hook into so, so I can hear if somebody uh, writes something on the Discord as well. Uh, you guys never mind. Uh, okay. So, and that search does basically, and we can almost uh, again jump to the script of our vanilla and say, uh, let's do the same thing again here, right? Let's sure that this stuff exists just so we have, um, we can run it from, from our development server without stress, right? Let's quickly define that here. And then here, that is again going to be an asynchronous function. And here we again going to write our try catch block. Uh, we're gonna say let result is, um, I'm gonna wait. Uh, axios.get and now we're going to place the course helper here plus the recipe API uh, and then plus was it I? I think so. And then here um, we now have that available as term. Right? So here is where we set it. Right, to set term with, with the event itself. 
and then on the submit the search gets executed and now basically we should be uh, good to um, make that call of course now that I look at it, it we won't uh, because we need to import axios from uh, axios and now it looks better what do you want yeah no that's fine um, okay now what we did with the other app was uh, we disabled um, this whole thing right so that's something that we want to do as well um, so on the button we're going to basically say okay disabled if disabled and which means that we want to have another state that we call uh, disabled and set uh, disabled and that is again our use state and our initial state here is false and up here when we call the search we want to do that again and we're going to say set disabled true and if this comes back, uh, we want to have um, set disabled is false. Okay. And here we're going to have our catch block where we're again simply going to say uh, console.log uh, the error just so if that fails for whatever reason. Now, um, and here comes the big uh, challenge here now. Right, so in the view, what we did is we bubbled up by event, and that is uh, something that you can do with React, but it's simply so not how you want to work with React. So, so here we have to kind of split how, how we are doing things, um, because what you actually want to do is um, you want to give um, this component a callback function instead from above. Okay, so what that means is. Um, that you want to put in properties. So let's look at this from home, the home perspective of home. So here we have our container, right? For, for whatever kind. Uh, okay, that doesn't work in here. Fair enough. Uh, let's simply create a diff uh, that has the class name. Uh, and uh, this doesn't need to flex. Okay, so let's just assume that we're going to start to say, okay, we want to import this recipe search uh, from this one. Yeah, see now it's getting confused. Um, and then say, okay, so recipe search. Um, and what we want to do here is to basically say, okay, recipe, um, let's call this found recipes. Yeah. Okay. And then we basically create something here, right? And say, uh, Bind recipes. Okay. And actually, let's let's even make this a little bit more beautiful. Actually, what we are going to do is we're going to define a use here. So we're going to say recipes and set recipes. Um, so let's quickly create a deconstruct the use state here. And now say, okay, this is use state and it's an empty array. Um, so what I can directly do here now is to say, okay, set recipes, right? And this bubbles the event up. Actually, this might even work. Let's see if we can be that lazy. Let's see if we can be that lazy. Um, right? So, so. And those found recipes is something that that Nash need to exist down there. So in here, we're basically going to say, okay, uh, found recipes. This can be simply props, 
right? Uh, it makes sense to define it so so the outer script knows what what uh, is available for reusability. If that makes sense. And so when we're here, what we can do now is to say, okay, now we're going to call found recipes with our rest data results. Oops. Uh, results, just like we did before. Okay. So far, so good. Um, and now let's get the card in. So let's go to our components and say, okay, so far, so good. Now our second component is our uh, recipe card. And you guessed it. Uh, we're going to import React from React. And we're going to basically say, okay, constant uh, recipe card is a function. And we're going to export default recipe card. Um, and this will basically be a very, very simple uh, pure markup thing, right? So let's jump back into our index HTML. Now in that case, it wasn't script JS and kind of steal that markup here and say, okay, that needs to be that. And of course, what I can already see is that we need one single root element. Uh, that's going to be uh, and that needs to flex, of course. You no, know, it also doesn't need to flex. Okay. Now let's re rewrite that to, to a React um, mockup. So what we have here, and that's a little bit, okay. So let's say constant style is, so that's how we'd kind of do it here and say, okay, that is back ground image. And then we have URL um, plus recipe dot thumbnail. All right, so we kind of know that and that is something that we want to place in here. So here we're going to simply say, okay, that's going to be style. Let's see what we have here. Here we don't, okay, there's a lot of declarative stuff. That's fine. And here we just get rid of the dollar sign. Uh, okay. So that should kind of work. So the only question is, how do we get to recipe? And of course, well, we're just going to we're just going to give it in. Okay, so from our outer view, let's first import that import recipe card uh, from here. We now say, okay, we, well, so if we have those recipes back, right, we, we, we're binding this now to recipes. And now we want to iterate over recipes. So in Vue, there was this beautiful way of, of simply using the V4. Unfortunately, in React, to, even to this day, they have not made a very nice solution of how to iterate. <coughs> so we kind of have to trick um, it. And people working with React don't even notice this, that that's actually a little bit of a, of a, of a cheat because it's just how, how they do it and how they think it. You know, one would want to write that. Um, so we're simply going to say, okay, recipes dot map. Um, and so here we have our recipe, right? Uh, and what we're going to do is we're simply going to here input our recipe card uh, and give it recipe of recipe. Okay, and that's how we iterate through it. Right, not not very beautiful, but it works. Um, and that is basically. Um, so then we receive it here. Yeah, this this should actually work. Should 
work. Let's try it out. So onions and milk. Uh, onions, sure, show me options. Oh, that went a little bit fast. Ah, uh, and did the same mistake again. That's interesting that I made the same mistake again because so in React, I have nothing that would help me with, with um, how events bubble. So I have in my recipe search, uh, in my search, I actually need to say, hey, uh, don't do that, please. Prevent default and stop the regular propagation of events. Let's do it, try that again. And as you can see, I now get uh, my results out. So I'm actually a little bit curious of where my, uh, where my images are. Let's quickly see if that's an issue. Uh, yeah, so I do wanna have a flex there. Okay, uh, hold on. So in my recipe card, I do wanna have a flex here. Right, does that re-render nicely? Yeah. Okay, there you go. All right, so that's that's basically it. Um, and now we have, ooh, what's my console here? Uh, render method of home, okay. Yeah, there's one more thing that, that in that case really doesn't matter, but um, what you should ideally do um, is to give this, a key it can work with. Uh, I keep forgetting this. Uh, and in that case, we're simply going to say, uh, you know what, we're not going to say any of that. We're going to give this the iteration itself and say keys i. Okay, tomatoes and onions. Let's get our options in. Oh. Did that not work? Uh, using target blank without, oh, okay, never mind. Okay, so those are basically our our two options. Now let's let's uh, recap a little bit. So what's what's nice about React um, is um, you know how how binding works now that they have hooks in there, um, but at the same time it creates a couple of bottlenecks. So let me actually close this for now. A uh, cu couple of bottlenecks. So, so in this case, it was pretty simple, right? To say like, okay, I'm setting the uh, complete, um, uh, where is it? Uh, just using the set recipes and I'm just gonna completely overwrite this. So that's, that's pretty nice. But um, what a regular case would probably be to say like, well, what if you want to add uh, to an array, right? What if you wanna start uh, to push to an array? Um, so, so then you kind of have to, to do this a little bit more complicated. Um, and I basically say, okay, um, add to recipe. Um, um, and I basically, I don't know, let's say, or let's say item. Uh, so this could, for example, then look a little bit like, okay, set recipes. And then you say st current state and then you would basically do something like um, uh, item comma dot 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 uh, recipes, right? And of course you would kind of have to do it like that for it to work, right? Um, so so you, you need to somehow find a lot of, of, of tricks to make things work, but um, all of those tricks are, are well documented, so to speak. Some of them are not really in the documentation, but it's, it's always logical, right? So, okay, so so once you see the solution, it's kind of like, yes, of course. Um, but that's that, that's what make, makes a React quite hard to learn. Uh, and that's a little bit the issue with with uh, with React in general. It's, it's not very approachable, right? Or also like, okay, how would you iterate? Like, that's, that's a, you know, like that's not approachable. It doesn't, it doesn't look, I mean, it's not beautiful um, in, in any way. And if, if you can imagine if it gets more complicated and you have to have some kind of, of uh, calculated values in here, uh, it becomes messy. 
uh, and you see a lot of people doing stuff like that then in another function. So they would have, you know, a function that would do the iteration and then uh, they iterate over the function rather than over, over the actual, um, in that case, array and so on. So it's, it's really something where you say like, okay, why, why didn't they tackle that uh, iteration a little bit better? Um, but nonetheless, it made a huge step with, um, with how things work from with regarding the hooks, uh, the class based model was was very messy. Um, so I guess uh, they're going in the right direction, at least. And if we compare that basically to what we how simple it is in our case, and how we would have to do it in view. Uh, let's do the view app and look at the home in comparison. Uh, that's at home uh, views home. Let's maybe put that right here. Let's check that out a little bit, right? So, um, oh, that is uh, that's not what I actually wanted to look at. Uh, we called it recipes in view. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. Right, where so this wasn't possible for us here in, in view, right? We had we had to do the uh, bind recipes and, and define a method for it. On the other hand, um, so we have a very, very logical way of declaring um, um, events. It's it's a way more logical approach, especially if, if you're thinking about like very, very deep objects where you probably want to, to pass on, uh, you can bubble to the top, right? With, with uh, dollar root emit. Um, which is which is pretty useful um, because sometimes you don't know which context you're in and in react you have that problem that your props are kind of limiting um, the the way that binding works is also a little bit closer to to um, how uh, a natural HTML uh, markup would look like and you have a very very nice and clean form of iteration right that you can do on any kind of um, um, I mean, this even works on objects and so on. So this is this is a pretty, pretty nice um, solution. Um, if you start looking at it from from a perspective um, that you don't understand, so let's just say like, okay, you're looking at something like like a recipe. Uh, that's actually a recipe search. So let's compare that to the view recipe search. Uh, yeah, that one. All right. Let's get that over here um here's the recipe search is over here come on yeah really need more rams um and here's our recipe search okay so here's basically the rack version here's the view version um so, okay, I mean, I could have basically put the return on top so we have a better comparison here. Maybe I should even do that right now. Uh, let's actually put that here so we can basically see. So um, in the view, um, the first thing that we notice is they they get out of the issue um, with with uh, need, needing JSX, right? By, by simply saying like, okay, we have a template and then we have a script tag, right? So it's, it seems very native. And if you wanted to, um, even if you have a style on a, on a browser module, so you don't even need to build this with with simple tricks, you can basically say, hey, I don't, I don't, I can generate those on the fly, which makes it very suitable, for example, for, for Laravel um, or any other kind of, of uh, backend that uses it. Because you can basically, uh, you don't need a development server. Uh, you, can, you can kind of generate uh, those uh, components pretty, pretty nicely on the fly and interpret it. Um, so the, uh, well, here's basically the same thing happens here, right? So here's the big difference is, okay, the data, how that works, right? With, with the disabled. And as you can see, the, um, the, the disabled, uh, thing is something that we kind of like simply set here as, as mutable object. So that feels pretty natural and it's also uh, pretty powerful. Um, one could, of course, argue that that well, you know, but this is clean. Um, but but uh, don't forget that. So if if we're talking about like clean, then both of those solutions is probably not what you would do in bigger applications. You would probably use a store, 
So it then ha has defined actions of what you can do um, with particular values anyway. So um, the, the possibility to basically be quick and dirty is, is not always um, a negative point. It's actually, it's actually a strong point as long as you have the ability to, to um, also be strict. Um, and then again, here the big difference is here we are expecting a, um, a uh, callback function to be passed in that must exist on the outside, otherwise this will crash. Um, in this case, that will not crash. So this is a functional uh, standalone component. And if nobody listens to my recipes, well, then nobody listens to my recipes, right? So that's um, the big uh, difference in, in how you would build that. Um, and again, you could, in theory, use an event and propagate up in, in um, React, but, but that's, that's really not how, how you would use React. So, so that's, that's basically a little bit um, something that always bothers me is that React apps, um, they're intended to be non-monolithic, right? And, and really only work on um, a purely declarative basis. And you have to be really strict with yourself to, to actually achieve that, right? Most, most React apps I see, um, they don't make use of that. So um, you have to be strict with yourself in, in both cases, I suppose. Uh, to, but but uh, with Vue, you have a little bit more liberties of saying like, okay, if if uh, an outside um, um, component doesn't make use of particular events, then no, nothing nothing fails, right? That might even sometimes be um, intentional. Yeah, that basically concludes it. Um, so. I have a bunch of people online today. That's 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 nice. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, I'm gonna jump off and um, uh, basically get something to drink. As you can probably hear, I'm 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 really dry <laughs> in my mouth. And um, I would basically um, uh, jump on. Uh, I'm gonna start the. So we have voted in in the Discord. We have voted. So we're gonna build a application that does um, uh, well, where you basically have, have a coding quiz where you have to achieve something and, and uh, a little bit like a lead code or, or um, code warrior or, you know, all those kind of things that are out there to uh, kind of test your abilities. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm going to start that from a completely non-coding perspective first. So we're going to plan the project, see, see what it takes and so on and um, then walk through it. So, so that's probably gonna take us, um, I don't know, uh, maybe even a couple of weeks, depending on how much time I have, I guess. Uh, until then, uh, thank you guys for watching and um, Football Maniac, I, um, I, if, if you wanna, wanna write in, in, in the Discord what exactly your issue is, then probably people will be more willing and able to help you. Um, and uh, because it's, it's very, very general what you write here. Um, but um, I surely look at it if you do so and uh, try to help you out. Thank you guys and uh, see you soon.